Good morning. Today we will start with flow in pipes. Fluid flow in circular and non-circular pipes is commonly encountered in practice. Hot and cold filter that we use in our house is pumped through pipes. Water in the city is used by extensive piping network. Oil, natural gas is transported hundreds of miles by large pipelines. Blood is carried throughout our body by artery and veins. The cooling water in an engine is transferred by hose to the pipe in the radiator where it is cooled as it flows. Also the thermal energy in hydronic space heating system to the circulating water in boiler and then it is transferred to the desired location through pipes. Fluid flow is classified external and internal depending on whether the fluid is forced to flow over a circuit or conduct. Internal and external flow exhibit very different characteristics. In this chapter we consider internal flow where the conduct is completely filled with the fluid and the flow is driven by pressure difference. We start with the general physical description internal and the velocity boundary layer. Then we we'll discuss null number and its physically significant. We then discuss the characteristics of flow inside pipes and introduce the pressure of correlation shorted with it for both laminar turbulent flows. Then we we'll discuss major and minor losses in, and pressure drop in the pumping power requirements for real world pumping system. So liquid or gas flow pipes or ducts is commonly used in heating and cooling application and fluid distribution network. The fluid in such application is usually forced to flow by a fan or a pump through a flow section. We pay particular attention to friction which is directly related to the pressure drop and heat loss, head loss during the flow through the pipes and ducts. The pressure drop then used to determine the pumping power requirement. A typical pipe system involves pipe of different diameters connected to each other by various fitting the elbows. You can see here we had circular types of pipes which are used at high pressure to for the water to flow at high pressure and we can use rectal duct which are used for air which is having less pressure. You may probably notice that the most fluids especially liquids and uh, transported in circular tubes. This is because pipes with the circular cross section can withstand large pressure difference between the inside and outside without undergoing significant distortion. Non-circular pipes are usually used in applications such as heating and cooling system or buildings where pressure difference is literally small means the pressure difference between outside and inside if it's small we use rectangle and pressure difference between inside and outside is more we use circular kind of pipes because they can withstand high pressure. Although the theory of fluid flow is reasonably well understood theoretical solutions are obtained only for a few simple cases such as fully developed laminar flow in a circular pipe. Therefore, we must rely on experimental results and empirical relations for both fluid and flow problem rather than close form analytical solutions. Although there will be some error. The fluid velocity in pipe, this is a pipe, change from zero at the surface because of no slip condition to the maximum at the center of the pipe. So in fluid flow, it is convenient to work with the average velocity. This is average velocity, which will give the same oscillate in this pipe when you consider the variable velocity. So the average velocity in heating and cooling application may change somewhat uh, because of change in density with temperature. But in practice we evaluate the fluid property as some average temperature and treat them constant throughout. The friction between fluid particles in a pipe does not cause a slight, does cause a slight rise in fluid temperature as a result of mechanical energy being converted to sensible thermal energy. But temperature rise due to frictional heating is usually too small and uh, in the absence of any heat transfer, no noticeable difference can be detected between inlet and outlet temperature of the water from the pipe. The primary consequence of friction uh, in the fluid flow is pressure drop and does any significant temperature change in the fluid is due to heat transfer. Now the value of average velocity at some streamwise cross section is determined from the conservation mass principle which is mass is equal to density to velocity average to AC which is constant or which will remain same. So this must be equal to area of cross section density u is the variable velocity and dac is the cross section area where ur is your velocity per file. Now you would integrate it before integration put dA is equal to 2 pi r dr and when you integrate you will get uh, 2 by r square into integral 0 to r ur r dr. Therefore we when we know the flow rate means the mass flow rate or the velocity per file you are the average velocity can be determined which means, which means you can calculate the average velocity v average from this solution. So laminar turbulent flow uh, you had seen around smoker you probably noticed that cigarette smoke rises in smooth plume for the first few centimeter and then start fluctuating 
you can also see on candle light you can see this is your laminar flow and above this is your turbulent flow so likewise a careful inspection of flow in a pipe reveals that the fluid flow is streamlined at low velocities but turns chaotic as the velocity is increased above critical value the flow regime in the first case is called laminar so this is your laminar flow if you insert a die it will follow streak line path streamlined path and if this follow this zigzag motion chaotic path this is called turbulent the transition from laminar to turbulent flow does not occur suddenly rather it occurs over some region in which the flow fluctuates so the flow between laminar and turbulent is called transition region so laminar flow is encountered with the highly viscous fluids such as oils flow in small pipes or narrow passages the test mixing of fluid in the turbulent flow as a result of rapid fluctuation enhance momentum transfer between fluid particles which increase the friction force on the surface and does the required puppy power the friction factor reaches a maximum when the flow becomes fully turbulent normal number the transition from laminar to turbulent flow depends on geometry surface roughness flow velocity surface temperature and type of fluid means number of factors but uh, normal number not discover that flow regime depends mainly on the ratio of inertia force to viscous force now inertial force upon viscous force in this case inertial force is equal to when you take the ratio of these two forces so you will get this v average into dy kinematic viscosity so density into v average into dy is this your dynamic viscosity where this kinematic viscosity is equal to ratio of this dynamic viscosity or density of the fluid that the large null number the inertial forces which are proportional to the fluid density means uh, and square of the fluid velocity you can see here this is inertial force which is proportional to density and square of the velocity so it means at uh, if the velocity is higher the inertial force is higher so and thus the viscous force cannot prevent the random and rapid fluctuation of the fluid at small or moderate to long numbers however the viscous force are large enough to suppress this fluctuation and keep the fluid in line so that is why at a higher null number your flow become turbulent because viscous forces are overcome uh viscous forces are you can say very low to overcome this uh, inertial forces so thus the flow is turbulent in the first case and laminar in the second case the null number at which the flow becomes turbulent is called critical number number r critical the value of the critical number is different for different geometries and flow conditions for internal flow in pipes the generally accepted values of critical null number is null critical equal to 2300 So this is here for circular pipe, but in case of this duct and this rectangular pipe, you have to use hydraulic diameter, which is 4 ac upon p instead of diameter of the pipe. So in case of circular pipes, the hydraulic diameter is the same as the diameter of the pipe. So this your hydraulic diameter is defined in a way that in circular pipe it will give diameter of the pipe if you calculate the hydraulic diameter. but in case of square and rectangular diameter you have to calculate and it is given in this here this is hydraulic diameter in case of square which is a in case of rectangular diameter the hydraulic diameter is equal to 2ab plus divided by ab a plus b the flow in circular pipe is laminar if round number is less than 2300 and is turbulent if round number greater than 4000 and in between it is called transition flow the entrance region consider a fluid entering a circular pipe at a uniform velocity because of no circulation the fluid particles in layer contact with the surface of the pipe come to complete stop so this is the fluid enter through this pipe with a fixed velocity now as you can see this is the no slip condition where fluid is coming into contact with the pipe zero velocity at the pipe surface here so this layer also cause the fluid particles in adjacent layer to slow down gradually as a result of friction means this layer which is at zero velocity near to the surface will slow down the adjacent surface due to the friction to make up for this velocity reduction the velocity of the fluid at the mid section of the pipe has to increase to keep the mass fluid through the pipe constant as a result velocity gradient develops along the pipe so because the fluid velocity here is less and to keep the mass fluid same so fluid velocity will start to increase at this portion you can see at this center fluid velocity more as compared to at this location and your velocity profile start to form the region in which viscous forces are you can say effect of viscous forces is visible this is called velocity boundary layer so this region is called velocity layer boundary layer and the region is called irrotational flow region in which friction effects 
and are negligible and the velocity remains essentially constant in the radial direction so this is called irrotation core region in which the velocity is constant and friction effects are negligible in this region you can see velocity is almost constant so this is your irrotation core flow region the thickness of the boundary layer increase in the flow direction until the boundary reaches at the center of the pipe and thus fills the entire pipe as shown so the region where or you can say point where your it will merge at the center line is called hydrodynamic entrance entrance region so your boundary layer starts from here and it will merge at the center so this region is called hydrodynamic entrance region and this region is called hydrodynamic fully developed region where your fully developed velocity profile is visible and this length is called the hydrodynamic entry length flow in entrance region is called hydrodynamic developing flow so this is this region where the velocity profile develops the region beyond this region is called hydrodynamic fully developed region the flow is said to be fully developed so beyond this profile we will see uh, the velocity profile in fully developed region is parabolic in laminar flow and somewhat flatter in turbulent flow due to eddies now hydrodynamic fluid well flow this condition is del u rx by del x is equal to 0 means this velocity profile will remain same with that along the tube length and u is a function of r only and we also know the shear stress on the wall uh, is related to the slope of the velocity profile at the surface noting that the velocity profile remains unchanged in the hydrodynamic fluid well region the wall shear stress also remains constant in this region means at this portion the shear stress is same at this portion consider fluid flow in hydrodynamic entrance region of pipe the wall shear stress is the highest at the pipe inlet where the thickness of the boundary layer is smallest here shear stress is maxim, uh, maximum because of the velocity profile and also the boundary layer thickness is the minimum and the shear stress decreases gradually to the fluid valve value therefore uh, the pressure drop is higher in the entrance region of pipe and effect of reentrance region is always to increase the average friction factor for the pipe this increase may be significant for short pipes but is increased for long pipes entry length the hydrodynamic entry length is usually taken to be the distance from the pipe entrance this to where the wall shear stress this is wall shear stress reaches within 2% of the fully developed value so this is shear stress at the fully developed region and uh, this is your shear stress in the developing region the hydrodynamic entry length is given approximately by this LH laminar means this is your hydrodynamic entry length which is equal to 0 0.05 rod into diameter of the pipe say when your rod number is 20 the hydrodynamic entry length is about the size of diameter of the pipe and when rod number is 2300 it will become 115D so in turbulent flow, dentist mixing duration during a random fluctuation usually overshadows the factor of molecular diffusion. So hydrodynamic entry length for turbulent flow can be approximated at this relation. It is a weak function of roll number, so it will is very less. The entry length is much shorter in turbulent flow as expected, and it depends on the dependence on the roll number is very weaker. In many pipe flow of practical engineering trusts, the entrance effects become insignificant beyond a pipe length of 10 d. So the hydrodynamic entry length is approximate as 10 d. Laminar flow in pipes. The flow in pipe is laminar when round number is less than 2300 and uh, that the flow is fully developed if the pipe is sufficient low. So the entrance effects are negligible. In this section we consider the study laminar flow of incompressible fluid with constant properties in fully developed region of a straight circle pipe. We obtain the momentum equation by applying momentum balance to differential volume element and obtain the velocity profile by solving it. Then we obtain the relation for friction factor. So in fully developed region, this is fully developed region, each fluid particle move at constant axial velocity along a streamline and the velocity profile UR remains constant. So this profile remains constant. This is your maximum velocity. This is the radial direction R. So consider a small element, ring shaped element, volume of the radius r, thickness dr and the length dx. 
Now the volume element involves only pressure and viscous force. So we had pressure force and we have viscous force. The pressure force acting on submerged plane surface is product of pressure at the centroid of the surface and surface area. So apply the force values on this ring element. You will get the pressure which acted to the normal and uh, the area which is normal to this pressure is equal to 2 pi r dr. So if you take the area of this ring which is the normal to pressure is equal to parameter of the ring into this dr minus this pressure which is in this direction plus shear stress which will act in this direction which is here now shear act, stress will act on this surface this surface which is here and it will act on the parameter of the ring so it means 2 pi r dx so this is dx and when you multiply by parameter of the ring you will get 2 pi r dx and tau and same this is your shear stress on the upper surface uh, which indicates the fully developed flow in horizontal pipe the viscous and pressure force balance each other so divide by 2 pi r dx so if you divide this equation by 2 pi r dr dx you will get this equation now take the limits dr and dx dx tends to 0 integrate both you will get r db by dx plus d r tau by dr is equal to 0 now substituting the value of tau which is equal to minus u du by dr in this case in this equation and uh, taking mu is equal to constant you will get this equation mu by r d by dr r du by dr is equal to d by dx so this quantity du by dr is negative in pi flow and the negative sign is included to print positive value of tau because if this is negative the negative negative and tau will become positive or you also can you can say du by dr is equal to minus du by dy where y is equal to r minus r now this side of equation is a function of r and this side of equation is a function of x so the equality must hold for any value of r and x and the equality of the form means a function of r and gx can be satisfied only if both fr and gx are equal to the same constant thus we conclude that d by dx is equal to constant so means this is constant so this quantity is constant can be also proved if you take a small element here and uh, pressure on this side is p and pressure on this side is p plus dp area is pi r square for this element and your this is your shear stress which is on the surface of this element which is parameter 2 pi r into dx which is the surface area of this uh, ring or you can say is this disk element now if you balance these three forces this this and this you will get this this is in this direction so we will take positive this is negative and this is also negative so it is equal to 0 and when you solve it you will get d power dx is equal to minus 2 power double by r now this value is constant which is shear stress it is constant and r is constant so db by dx must be constant tau double is constant since viscosity and velocity profile are constant in fully developed region so this value is constant now you can integrate this and when you take integration you will get this value c1 and c2 constant you can solve for c1 and c2 by putting the boundary conditions so del u by del r is equal to 0 at r is equal to 0 means you can say at this point uh, the curve is taking around and this derivative must be 0 for ur with respect to r because of symmetry about the center line and u is 0 at r is equal to r the no slip condition at the pipe surface by putting these two boundary conditions you will get c1 and c2 now this is your velocity profile therefore the velocity profile in fluid laminar, laminar flow in a pipe is parabolic with the maximum at the center and minimum at 0 so this is the equation of parabola now if you have to take calculate the average velocity which is 2 by r square into 0 to r ur r dr you can calculate put here value of ur this is your average velocity now we know uh, at the center of the pipe the velocity is maximum so put r0 you will get maximum velocity now 
and when you check that u max is equal to 2 of the average if you put r 0 u max will come 2 of the average this term will become 0 so therefore the average velocity in fully developed laminar flow pipe uh, is one half of the maximum velocity pressure drop and head loss a quantity of interest in the analysis of pipe flow is the pressure drop delta p since it is directly related to the power requirement of the fan or pump to maintain the flow we know that dp by dx is equal to constant and integrating for x is equal to x1 where the pressure is p1 and x is equal to x1 plus where pressure is p2 you will get this now dp by dx you can calculate from our equation from which equation you can find dp by dx and when you take this on the third you will get in terms of v average the pressure drop which is 8 mu v average by r square so this is your pressure drop in case of laminar if you put r instead of r replaced with d it will this the symbol delta is typically used to indicate the difference between final initial values like del y is equal to y2 minus 5 but in flow flow del p is using to designate the pressure drop thus it is p1 minus p2 a pressure drop or due to viscous effect represent an irreversible pressure loss and it is called pressure loss del pl so this is your del pl along the length l this is your pressure loss in practice found that uh, expression of pressure loss is mostly for all types uh, for fully developed internal flow laminar turbulent flow circular non circular pipe smooth rough this is generalized del pl is equal to f l by d into density v average square by 2 where this factor is the dynamic pressure and f is your darcy friction factor now this uh, here friction factor or Darcy friction factor is equal to 8 tau w by density v average square it is also called Darcy Weschbeck friction factor now this is pressure loss if you divide this by density and gravity you will get a unit of meter which is called head loss so in terms of uh, loss we will terms pressure loss or we will also say there is a head loss of this much amount which unit is in meter now if you equate this equation, this is pressure loss and this equation, this is also pressure loss. You can find F in terms of these parameters which is, so after equating equation 20 and 21 you will get a friction factor which is 64 by round number. This equation shows in laminar flow the friction factor is a function of round number only and is independent of roughness of pipe. Also we will express head loss HL which is del P by rho G. So, pipe head loss is obtained by dividing del P by density to G, which will give this, this is your head loss. Now, we have to find the pump, pumping power of uh, uh, a particular fluid, that is volume flow rate of fluid into pressure drop or pressure loss. Volume flow rate into your pressure loss. Also, you can replace del P in terms of HL, which is head loss, by taking this term on this side. Now if you replace this del P by this term, you will get M G H, this will become mass flow rate and gravity to height, head loss, where the V is the volume flow rate and M is the mass flow rate. Now rearrange this equation for to find V average velocity, take this terms and the denominator side in the both equation. You will get these three equations, V average velocity is equal to in horizontal pipe is equal to this. Now volume flow rate can be found by multiplying area of cross section of pi which is pi r square. So you will get this equation. Now this equation is known as Poiseuille law and the flow is called Hagen Poiseuille flow in honor of work of J. Hagen. So note that for a special flow rate the pressure drop and does the required pumping power is proportional to the length of pipe and the viscosity of fluid. Also you can see if the pipe diameter is doubled. Uh, the velocity will become 1 by 4th and if your velocity is 1 by 4th and we know head loss or pressure loss is equal to proportional to the velocity square it means you can see here the pumping power is reduced by to 1 horsepower as compared to in this case it means if you increase the diameter of the pipe your pumping power will decrease in this case it is 16 horsepower with d diameter in this case is 1 horsepower the pressure of del P is equal to the pressure loss del PL 
in this case of horizontal pipes this pipes which is horizontal but uh, this is not the case for uncarded pipes or pipes with varying cross section this can be demonstrated by writing an energy equation for study in compressible one dimensional flow in terms of head as you can see so this is your energy equation which is uh, this is your pressure head this is your velocity head this is a datum head that one and this is your pump work and uh, this is your pressure head velocity head and datum head at the second section plus x drawing plus head loss hl so this equation here now you can also see this alpha and alpha are connecting energy correction factor here and here now in this case you can rearrange and you can calculate p1 minus p2 which is now therefore pressure drop this uh, del p and the pressure loss rho g h l for a given flow section or equivalent means this here in this case become h l which is uh, in the case of horizontal ply only when these terms are zero and uh, it means your this term is zero and if z2 is equal to z1 means the flow section is horizontal so that there are no hydrostatic graft effects z1 z2 equal the flow section does not run any work device such as pump and turbine so don't include pump and turbine because turbine and pump will change the pressure of the fluid the cross section area of the flow section is constant and does the average flow velocity is constant means v1 and v2 are constant if the cross section area is constant the velocity profile at section 1 and 2 are the same shape is alpha 1 and alpha 2 is same so then in that case your pressure drop will become equal to head loss the same case is in case of horizontal pipe now take example of inclined pipe in inclined pipe the there is a weight of fluid which will act in downward and uh, this component which is w sin theta it will act in this direction so compared to the previous case we had one more component w sin theta weight of the liquid you can see here we are four components here we have have five components now on the same ring we have total five components balance these five components here you will be equal to zero we know w is equal to density into gravity into volume of element we know what is volume of element of this ring that is your 2 pi r dr into dx this is the volume of element again solving this equation you will get this equation and when integrated you will get this equation now you can see this compare this equation here with the previous case this case which is case of horizontal pipe the only extra term is this term which is density to gravity into sin theta which is due to the inclination effect and which is due to the weight of the fluid element also v average you will get this extra term here and volume of fluid you will get this extra term here so which are identical to corresponding relation for the resultant pipe except the del p is replaced by this relation therefore the results already obtained for horizontal pipe can be also be used for inclined pipe provided that del p is replaced by this note that theta greater than 0 and does sin theta greater than 0 for upwell flow and theta less than 0 and thus sin theta is less than 0 for downwell flow you can see here if this theta is 0 the pipe is horizontal if theta is your negative the pipe is downhill if theta is positive pipe is uphill double velocity fly profile unlike a laminar flow the expression for velocity profile and double flow are based on both analysis and measurement and uh, they are semi numerical nature with constant determinant from experiment data so typical velocity profile of a fully developed laminar this is laminar and turbulent flow are shown in figure so this figure Uh, note that the velocity profile is parabolic in nature in laminar but it's much fuller in turbulent flow with a sharp drop near at the pipe turbulent flow along a wall can be considered to consist of four regions this is your viscous sublayer then you had buffer layer then you had overlap layer and then you have turbulent layer the very thin layer next to the wall where viscous effects are dominant is viscous laminar or linear or wall sublayer this layer the velocity profile in this area is very linear and the flow is streamlined in this case next to the viscous viscous layer is 
buffer layer, this layer, in which turbulent facts are becoming significant, but the flow is still dominated by viscous fact. So here also it is, uh, you can say viscous fact will dominate, and above this your transition or overlap layer, also called inertial sub layer, in which turbulent facts are much more significant but still dominate. Above that is the outer or turbulent layer. In this remaining part of the flow in the which turbulent facts dominate over molecular diffusion. So this part here your uh, turbulent facts dominate over the molecular diffusion means viscous facts. The thickness of viscous sub layer is very small, typically much less than 1% of pipe diameter. But this thin layer next to the wall plays a dominant role on the flow characteristic because of large velocity gradients involved. The ball dampens any eddy motion and thus the flow in this layer is essentially laminar and shear stress consists of laminar shear stress which is proportional to the flow viscosity. Considering the velocity change from zero to nearly the core region value across the layer that is sometimes no thicker than the hair almost like a step function. So we would expect the velocity gradient in the viscous sublayer remains nearly constant that is dy dy is equal to uy by. So your shear stress k is equal to which is mu dy dy instead of dy dy you can place with u and y. In the viscous sublayer we are also considered this slope to be constant. This is slope of uh, velocity with respect to y as you go in the upper direction. The slope is constant that is why dy dy is equal to constant. Now put the value of viscosity here which is density into dynamic viscosity and or rearranging you will get this equation. Now if you take the under root of this equation this is called friction velocity because it is a unit of velocity. So this u star expressed by u star if you take the under root of this you will, it is called friction velocity expressed by u star. The velocity profile in viscous sublayer can be expressed in dimensionless form. So put this u star here, it will become u star square and take one on this side and rearranging you will get this u by u star is equal to y u star by v. This equation is known as law of ball and it is found to be satisfactorily correlated with experiment data for smooth spray when your this value lies between 0 and 5. Now equate this is equal to 5, y is equal to 5 by u star. This is called thickness of sub layer and you can also write in this form by replacing this u star with the u delta which is flow velocity at the edge of viscous sub layer which is closely related to the average velocity of in a pipe. So thus we conclude that the thickness of viscous sub layer is proportional to the kinetic viscosity and inversely proportional to the average flow velocity. In other words, the viscous sublayer is suppressed and it gets thinner as the velocity increases. Consequently, the velocity profile becomes nearly flat and thus the velocity distribution becomes more uniform at higher nodes. So, the dimension of this V is cos T upon U star has the dimension of length. So, it is called viscous length. It is non-dimensionalized. The distance Y from the surface in the boundary layer analysis it is conveyed to work with non-dimensional distance and non-dimensional velocity defined. So this is a non-dimensional term y u star by v because this has the unit of 1 by length. So it is different by non-dimensional value and uh, this is also non-dimensional term which is u star here. So replace this non-dimensional value here it will become this u non-dimensionalized and y non-dimensionalized. So in the overlap layer so this is your overlap layer. The experiment data for velocity are observed to be line up in a straight line with the plotted against the logarithm of distance from the wall. The dimension analysis indicates that the experiments confirm that the velocity in the overlap layer is proportional to logarithm of distance and the velocity profile can be expressed as so this uh, can be expressed u by u star is equal to 1 by k log y u star by v plus v. The same equation can be expressed in this form. You can see this is viscous sublayer, this is buffer layer, this is overlap layer and this is turbulent layer. 
and you can see this is a logarithmic in the form of 10 raised to power and this is your this dimensionless number which is normalized log for the wall this u by u star now k and b are constant whose value are determined experimentally which is 0.4 and 5 so equation 46 is known as logarithmic law substitute the values of constant you will get this equation and you will get this equation here now it turns out that the logarithmic law satisfactorily represent experimental data for the entire flow region except for region very close to the wall you can see this is your experimental data and this logarithmic law is well in resemblance with this data except this region so, and thus it is viewed as universal velocity profile for turbulent flow in pipes over a surface note that from the figure the logarithmic law velocity profile is quite accurate for y greater than 30 means when your this value is 30 more than 30 which is almost at this point it is accurate and uh, the region which is uh, this region here which is lies between 5 and uh, 30 also the viscous sublayer appears much larger in the figure than it is since we used to logarithm scale for distance from the wall you can see this layer which is uh, very large but in diagram you can see it is very small so here viscous layer is very small the reason for this is we have used logarithmic scale here we have expressed in terms of 10 raised to power, power so that's why this is very large you can also calculate the same equation to find the constant b when your u is u maximum at the center of the pipe where your y is equal to r minus r and at the center of pipe your y is equal to r you can place y in terms of r you will get this equation the division of velocity from center line value u maximum u is called the velocity defect is called the velocity defect law the relation shows the normal velocity profile in the core region of the turbulent flow in the pipe depends on the distance from the center line and is independent of the velocity is cost of the fluid so this is not surprising since the eddy motion is dominant in this region and the effect of fluid viscosity is visible this is independent of viscosity this is for outer turbulent layer another law is power law of velocity profile that is this where the n is the constant whose value depends on not number for n 8 10 and 6 and n is generally 7 approximate many flows you can see the comparison of laminar and this power law in this graph where in this side you had ratio of r to r which is the diameter of the pipe at which location you are and this is u upon u maximum this is the ratio of the velocity velocity at particular location to the maximum velocity of the fluid at the center despite a small thickness of viscous sublayer uh, which is 1% of the pipe diameter the characters of the flow in this layer are very important since they set the stage for flow in the rest of the pipe any irregularity or uh, roughness on the surface disturbs the layer and affects the flow Therefore, unlike laminar flow, the friction factor in turbulent the flow is a strong function of surface roughness. So, this viscous layer is very small, but it is affected by the roughness of surface. So, we have to develop some relation between the roughness of surface and friction factor. And it should be kept in mind that the roughness related concept and its significance when its height is this is a roughness is compared to the thickness of the laminar sublayer. All material appear rough under microscope with sufficient magnification. In a fluid mechanic, a surface is characterized by being rough when the hills of roughness protrude out of the laminar sublayer. The surface is said to be smooth when the sublayer submerges the roughness elements. Glass and plastic surfaces are generally considered to be hydrodynamically smooth. The Moody chart, the friction factor in a fully developed turbulent pipe flow depends on the Arnold number and the relative number of roughness, which is the ratio of mean height of roughness of the pipe to the pipe diameter. The functional form of this dependence cannot be obtained from a theoretical analysis and all the wave results are obtained from pan stacking experiment. So here is your experimental result obtained by in the tabular and graphical form and this is developed by Colbrook. This is called Colbrook equation which is a friction coefficient and between the surface roughness. So this Colbrook equation is simply set of F so it is not easy to solve. We have to use some kind of solver 
और ई एस द इक्वलेंट रेफरेंस वॉल्यूज फॉर कमर्शियल पाइप इज गिवन दिस इज इफेक्टिवनेस इक्वलेंस सो इक्वलेंस रेफरेंस विच इज फॉर ग्लास एंड प्लास्टिक एंड देन कॉपर पाइप इज दिस एंड दिस फॉर स्टील सो फॉर डिफरेंट पाइप इट इज गिवन यू कैन पुट हेयर वैल्यूज एंड डायमीटर एंड यू कैन सॉल्व दिस इक्वेशन टू गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ फ्रिक्शन फैक्टर The result obtained from this equation are within two percent. Those obtained from Kullberg equation. So this is Moody chart, which will define the friction factor versus ground number for different surface roughness. You can see when your ground number is low, the friction factor is independent of the surface roughness, and it, the friction factor is a minimum for smooth pipe, but still not zero because no slip condition and increase the roughness. The cold work equation for in case of, uh, smoothness, fully smooth, reduced to this frontal location. The transition region from laminate to turbulent is indicated by shaded area in Moody chart. So this is your transition region. So the flow in this region may be laminate or turbulent depending on the flow disturbance, or it may be alternate between laminate turbulent and thus friction factor may be alternate between the values of laminate turbulent flow. At very large ground number to the right dashed line means this line is at large ground number. You can see your friction factor become constant. It is independent of the ground number. So the flow in this uh, region is called fully rough turbulent flow or just fully rough flow because the thickness of the viscous sublet decreases with increasing ground number, and it becomes so thin that it may be small compared to the surface turbulent height. The viscous effect in this case are produced in the main flow primarily by protruding roughness element, and the contribution of the laminar sublet is negligible. The Kolbrock equation in the fully rough zone, which when your ground number tends to infinity, reduces to one Kármán equation. That is this, this which is explained in F. In the calculation, you should take care that uh, use actual internal diameter of pipe. Which may be different than the nominal diameter. For example, the internal diameter of steel pipe, whose nominal diameter is one, is 1.049 inch. This is nominal size. This is actual inside diameter. Types of fluid flow problems in the design and analysis of piping system that and all the use of Moody chart. We use in counter three types of problem. The fluid and roughness of the pipe are assumed to be specified. So the first problem is determine the pressure drop. When the pipe length and diameter are given for a specific fluid, so so length is given, which is pipe diameter given, volume fluid or you can say velocity is given. You have to find head loss in the pipe. The second problem is determine fluid. Means you have to find a fluid. What is given? Pipe length is given, diameter given, and pressure drop is given. So this is given. In third case, you have to find the diameter of pipe. When your length of pipe is given, pressure drop is given, and uh, flow rate is given. Now, problem of the first uh, type are straightforward and can be solved using Moody chart. But uh, problem of second type, in uh, the diameter is given, but the flow rate is unknown. A good guess for the friction factor in that case is obtained from the completely turbulent flow region for the given roughness. This is true for large null numbers, which is often case. Once the flow is obtained, the friction factor can be corrected using Moody chart, and the process is repeated unless uh, the solution converts. Uh, there are also uh, some methods are uh, given by Swami and Jain. The following explanation: This is for this is for the head loss, which is when your L D and velocity or volume rate is given. So this parameter is given, D is given, L given. You can find this. In the second relation, you can find the velocity when your length, diameter, and pressure drop is given. So length, diameter, and head loss, or you can say pressure drop is given. In the third one, diameter, uh, you can calculate when your length, pressure drop, and velocity is given. When your length, or your this pressure drop and velocity is given. So these are valid for particular range. So determine the head loss in water pipe, water at 60 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, with this density and uh, this viscosity is flowing in a steadily in a two inch uh, diameter horizontal pipe. This is your two inch 
diameter horizontal pipe made of stainless steel at a rate of this 1 to feet uh, 2 per second the pipe length is 200 feet determine the pressure drop and head loss and the required pumping power for 4 to 100 feet loss section now we recognize this problem to the first type since flow rate is in pipe length and pipe diameter are known so flow rate diameter of pipe and length is given you have to find these values first find the velocity that is volume flow rate by area of cross section of pipe which is 9.70 feet per second find the round number corresponding to this velocity which is density v v d upon mu which is this and this is much larger so it is the turbulent flow the relative direction of pipe is calculated e by d this is given value of e is given here so a stainless steel pipe uh, it is given roughness from this table now we have e upon d ratio which is uh, 0.4042 so correspond to the round number of 126400 and your e by d ratio which is 0 0.000042 which is somewhere here and uh, this is e by d ratio between here and this is your round number somewhere here when you calculate the friction factor this will come out of this point which is in this case is 0 0.0174 now you had the friction factor you can find pressure drop which is equal to friction factor l by d into density v square by 2 which is 11.8 psi or in terms of this and also you can find head loss which is if you divide this by density to gravity you get head loss and what is pump that is a volume flow into del p which is 460 watt therefore the power input in the amount of 461 watt is needed to overcome the friction loss in the pipe the fluid in the typical piping system passed through various fittings walls and elbow steel inlet exit enlargement and contraction in addition to the pipes so these components interrupt the smooth flow of the fluid and cause additional losses because of flow separation and mixing they induce in a typical system with long pipes these losses are minor compared to the total head loss in the pipes and are called minor losses although this is generally true in some cases the minor loss may be greater than the major loss this is a case for example in system with several turns and wall in short distance the head loss introduced uh, by a completely open wall for example maybe like this but a partially closed wall may cause the large head loss in the system so you can see this is a pipe section uh, 1 and 2 and in between you had the wall there is a pressure loss between one section and two sections which is p1 minus p2 due to this wall so minor loss are usually expressed in terms of loss coefficient kl also called resistance coefficient so loss coefficient is defined as head loss divided by v square by 2g where actually is additional reversible head loss in the piping system caused by insertion of component and is defined as hl through del pl by density g now to calculate this del pl what we do for example imagine replacing the wall in this figure with a section of constant diameter pipe of location 1 2 now del p is defined as the pressure drop from 1 to 2 for the case with the wall p1 minus p2 wall minus the pressure drop that would occur in imaginary state pipe from section 1 to 2 without the wall means p1 minus p2 pipe at the same flow rate so major loss will occur at the wall but a small amount of loss will occur downstream of this wall means that this pipe action which, which is due to the eddies formed by and uh, disturbances the flow by this wall so we measure minor losses in some minor loss components such as elbows uh, for example location 2 must be considerably far downstream in order to fully account for the additional irreversible loss due to these decaying eddies so when the pipe diameter downstream of the component changes uh, determination of minor loss is even more complicated in all cases however it is based on additional reversible loss of mechanical energy that would be otherwise not exist if the minor loss component were not there for simplicity you may think of minor loss as occurring locally across the minor loss component but keep in mind that the component uh, influence the flow for several pipe diameter downstream by the way this is the reason why most flow meters manufacturer recommend installing their flow meter at least 10 to 25 diameters downstream of the elbow or wall this allows the swirling turbulence eddy generated by the elbow or wall to largely dispersed and the velocity profile to become fully developed before the entering the flow meter minor loss which is hl you can find from this kl coefficient which is your loss coefficient 
so the loss coefficient in general depends on the geometry of the component and the raw number just like the friction factor how it is usually assumed to be independent of our raw number this is a reasonable approximation since most flows in practice have large raw numbers so this is your minor loss and this uh, minor loss can be also expressed in terms of equivalent length l equivalent you can attach here friction l equivalent v square by d into 2g where l equivalent is equal to d by f into kl f is the friction factor and d is the diameter of pipe that contains the component the head loss caused by component is equivalent to the head loss caused by a section of the pipe whose length is l equivalent therefore the contribution of component uh, to head loss can be accounted by the simply adding l equivalent to the total pipe length so this is wall here in this case the head loss is p1 minus p2 and you can base this uh, value with the help of p3 minus p4 uh, for the same pipe in which is loss is same but this pipe length is more as compared to this wall to length so extra length will account for the head loss occurred at this wall so this this pipe is equivalent to this arrangement so the total head loss is equal to loss major plus loss minor we had calculated the major loss earlier which is this and minor loss is equal to this sum of this so this will give you the total head loss into a piping system the different loss coefficient are given table for inlet exit bands certain and gradual area changes and walls so this is loss coefficient kl of various pipe components for turbulent flow and the head loss is equal to kl v square by 2g this is a certain retardant means the diameter has increased and uh, this is this sharp edge here this is well rounded edge you can see uh, kl is 0.5 in case of sharp and kl is will decrease 0.03 by just rounding at edge and this is kl is equal to alpha pipe is it sharp edge kl is equal to alpha and rounded edge kl is alpha now the kinetic energy correction factor is alpha 2 for fully developed preliminary flow and alpha is equal to 1 for fully developed turbulent flow so certain expansion correction based on velocity in smaller diameter pipe so certain expansion kl is equal to this there is expansion in this from smaller to larger diameter pipe and for this is for certain contraction it is written in graph kl versus d square by d square smaller diameter in outer diameter larger diameter so this kl will uh, you can see this is decreasing when you go in this side means when your diameter are same kl is the least so it is better to avoid the sudden contraction and sudden enlargement in pipe the head loss at the inlet of pipe is strong function geometry also this we had discussed in the table also almost release for well rounded inlets when the inlets are rounded and 0.5 for the sharp inlets so that is the sharp edge inlet cause half of the velocity had to be lost as fluid enters the pipe this is called fluid cannot make the sharp 90 degree turn especially at high velocity as a result the flow separates at the corners and the flow is constricted to vena contractor region formed in the midsection of the pipe so this is a graphic definition of flow contraction and you should head loss at sharp edge pipe you can see this point where your fluid cross section area in the flow is minimum is called vena contractor this is separator flow here so this uh, you say this is your head at this point in terms of pressure when your fluid will go at this cross section you can see it the cross section is minimum so velocity has to increase so your velocity head will increase so pressure head will convert to velocity head at this section and uh, part of your uh, pressure head will decrease and uh, at this point when it will it again uh, align with the wall you can see as uh, this had uh, this is the loss of loss head that is kl v square by 2g and this is v square by 2g remaining loss head and uh, this is p2 by density g that is remaining pressure head so this is the this loss of the head in the case of sudden contraction so these are kl values and versus theta where theta is this angle this is for expansion and this is for contraction also diameter ratio is given the loss of a coefficient for a smudge pipe 
is often listed in handbooks as KL is equal to 1. More precisely, however, KL is equal to the kinetic energy correction factor alpha at the exit of the pipe. Although alpha is indeed close to 1 for fluid well turbulent pipe flow, it is equal to 2 for fluid well laminar pipe flow. So you can see this is smudge outlet. So full of energy of this is lost here. So we will use KL is equal to alpha at submerged pipe exit. This is submerged pipe exit. At any such exit, whether laminar or turbulent, the fluid leaving the pipe loses all of its kinetic energy as it mixes with the reservoir fluid and eventually comes to rest through the irreversible action of viscosity. Piping system often involves sudden or gradual expansion of contraction sections to accommodate changes in flow rates or properties such as density and velocity. The losses are usually much greater in the case of sudden expansion and contraction or wide angle expansion because of flow separation. By commanding the conservation of mass momentum and energy equation, the loss coefficient of case of sudden expansion is KL is equal to 1 minus A small by A large whole square. So this is the ratio of small to large area. In case of sudden expansion, note that KL is equal to 1 when there is no A change in area. This value is equal to this. And when a pipe discharge into reservoir, then your A large is much greater than A small. So this value will be negligible. So piping system also no all change in direction. So in case of sharp turn, the loss is 1.1. But instead of this sharp turn, if you use elbow, the loss will decrease. The loss factor will decrease to 0.3. So this is just like a car thrown off the road when it turns, it turns too fast. When it turns too fast on the inner side and the swirling secondary flow caused by different path lengths, there are losses. So all are commonly used in the piping system to control the flow rates by simply altering the head loss until the desired flow rate is achieved. For wall, it is desirable to have a very low coefficient when they are fully open so that uh, they cause minimal head loss during full load operation. Several different wall designs, each with its own advantage and disadvantage, are commonly in use today. The gate wall slides up and down like a gate. The globe wall closes the hole placed in the wall, and the angle wall is a globe wall with a 90 degree turn. So you can see the large head loss is primarily a uh, partially closed wall, is due to reversible deacceleration, flow separation, and mixing of high velocity fluid coming from the narrow wall passages. Piping network and pump selection. Most pipe system encountered in engineering, such as water distribution system in cities, commercial or residential established in all, numerous parallel and series connection as well as several source, supply of fluid into the system, and loads, discharge of fluid from the system. So a piping project may involve the design of new system or expansion of existing system. So the engineering objective in such project is to design a piping system that will deliver the specified flow rate at specific pressure, reliably at minimum total cost and maintenance and operating cost. Once the layout of system is prepared, the determination of pipe diameters and the pressure throughout the system while remaining within the budget constraints typically requires solving the system repeatedly until the optimal solution is reached. Computer modeling and analysis of such system make this steadiest task a simple one. You can see there are two pipes in series. The flow rate is the same in the pipe and the total Head loss is the sum of head loss in individual pipe, this head loss and this head loss. So piping system typically involves several pipes connected to each other in series and parallel as shown in figure. So this is pipe connected in series. So when the pipes are connected in series, the flow rate through the entire system remains constant regardless of the diameters of the individual pipes in the system. This is natural consequence of conservation of mass principle for steady incompressible flow. The total head loss in this case is equal to the sum of the head loss individual pipe in the system, including the minor losses. Expansion or contraction losses are at connections are considered to belong to smaller diameter pipe. Since the expansion and contraction loss coefficient are defined on the basis of average velocity in the smaller diameter pipe. In case of parallel pipe, suppose we have the two parallel pipes A and B. The total flow rate is sum of the flow rate in the individual pipe. The pressure drop in each individual pipe connected in parallel must be same. So pressure drop in this pipe, A pipe, pressure drop 
V pipe must be same. Now in this pipe pressure drop is same as to this pipe or you can say head loss in this pipe is equal to same as the head loss in this pipe. So means head loss of the first pipe is equal to head loss of second pipe. Now what is head loss of first pipe? This head loss second pipe is this and on rearranging you will get the ratio of velocities V1 by V2. So this is the ratio of velocity and corresponding this is the ratio of volume flow rate. So therefore the rate of flow rate in parallel pipes are established from the requirement that the head loss in each pipe will be same and you can find the flow rate of of this pipe and flow rate from the this pipe. The analysis of piping network no matter how complex they are is based on two principles. Conservation of mass throughout the system must be satisfied. This is done by requiring the total flow into a junction to be equal to the total flow out of junction for all junctions in the system. Also the flow rate remain constant in pipe is connected in series regardless of change in diameter. So pressure drop between two junctions must be same for all paths between two junctions. This is because pressure is a point function and it cannot have two values at a specified point. This is junction, this is junction. So at this point there can't be two values. So pressure at this B point must be same. It is only possible when your pressure drop through this pipe and this pipe is same. Therefore analysis of piping network is very similar to analysis of electric circuits with flow rate corresponding to electric current and pressure corresponding to electric potential. However, the situation is much more complex here since unlike the electric resistance, the flow resistance is a highly nonlinear function. Therefore, the analysis of pipe network required the simultaneous solution of a system of nonlinear equations. Piping system with pump and turbines. When a piping system involves pump turbine, the study flow energy equation on a unit mass basis can be expressed as this. In this equation, alpha is your kinetic energy connection factor. V value is nearly 1 for turbulent flow and component in practice. HL is your head loss in the piping system. So if you divide this equation by gravity, you will get in terms of heads this equation because here this is a unit of meter, this is a unit of meter. So all units are in meter, so it is a head in terms of head, pressure head, velocity head, datum head. So here H pump is the useful pump head delivered to the fluid and H turbine is the pump extracted from the fluid. So many engineering system, piping system involve a pump to move a fluid from one reservoir to another. Taking one and two beat at the free surface of the reservoir. So this is a one point reservoir, this is a two point reservoir. So pump has to raise the liquid from this Z1 to Z2. Now in this case here, uh, the velocity at free surface are negligible and the pressure at the atmosphere pressure. So here velocity is negligible, velocity is negligible and pressure at atmosphere pressure. Therefore, usual pump head is equal to the elevation difference between two reservoirs plus the head loss. So this is your elevation difference plus head loss. This is your total head which pump has to raise. So if the head loss is negligible compared to this value, if head loss is negligible, you can elect this term. Then the pump head is simply equal to the elevation difference which is Z2 minus Z1. The usual pump head is simply equal to the elevation difference between the two reservoirs. In case Z1 greater than Z2, uh, the first reservoir being at a higher elevation than the second with no pump, the flow is driven by gravity. If this is at a higher level, so then flow is driven by gravity from this reservoir to this reservoir. So once we know head loss, you can find the pumping power card. So work pump shaft is equal to volume flow rate into density, it will give you mass rate into gravity into head of pump which is from here you can calculate and this is your pump efficiency so this is your shaft work because pump is not fully efficient it won't able to convert whole of shaft energy into the head of the liquid so there must be some pump efficiency now once you know the shaft work you can find the electric energy required or you can see electric power needed to run a motor because motor has also some efficiency. So if you divide this uh, equation, so if you divide this uh, head or just you can say this power with the, if you divide this efficiency pump motor. Now in this case efficiency pump motor is a combination of motor and pump which is equal to efficiency of pump and efficiency of motor. Say efficiency of motor is your 90%. So we have to multiply your motor efficiency and pump efficiency and you will get the pump motor efficiency which we have to use to find the electric power needed to run that particular motor. So motor efficiency is 90% and 
and your pump pipe efficiency is 70%. The header loss in a piping system is usually quadratically with the flow rate. A plot of required useful pump head as a function of flow rate is called system. So you can see this is a system car. As the flow rate increase, your head required will be increased. The head produced by pump is not constant either. Both pump head and pump efficiency vary with flow rate and pump manufacturers supply this variation in tabular or graphical form. So this is head when your flow rate is zero, fresh pump exit is closed and produce maximum head and when you just open the flow and your flow rate will increase, you can see in this direction your flow rate is increasing and head raised by the pump produced by pump will decrease. And at the maximum flow rate, when the flow rate is maximum, pump will no produce head, which means no load. So no pipe attached to the pump, there it is, it is no load, the flow rate is maximum. Now efficiency of pump will also vary with the flow rate. At a zero flow rate, efficiency of pump is zero and it will increase with the flow rate, you can see. And it is maximum at this point, at this point, where this curve cuts this vertical line, it's maximum. Then it will further decrease, efficiency of pump will further decrease with the flow rate and it will again come to zero at this point. So this curve and this curve is experimentally determined efficiency and head pump curve versus the volume fluid and these are called characteristics curves or supply or performance curve. They are given by particular manufacturers. For different manufacturers this will be different. Note that the flow rate of pump increase as the required head decrease. The intersection point of the pump head curve with the vertical axis typically represents the maximum head the pump can provide. While the intersection point with the horizontal axis indicates the maximum flow rate that the pump can supply. So this is the maximum flow rate which pump can supply and this is the maximum head which pump can produce. This is the maximum head which uh, pump can produce. The intersection of this curve with the vertical axis. The efficiency of pump is sufficiently high for a certain range of head and flow rate combination. Therefore, pump that supply the required head and flow rate is not necessarily a good choice for a piping system unless the efficiency of pump at those conditions is sufficiently high. The pump installed in a piping system will operate at a point where the system curve and characteristic curve intersect. So you can see here, here is your system curve and here your characteristic curve of the pump will intersect and this is called operating point means pump should be operate in this range and the useful head produced by pump at this point matches the head requirement of the system curve. So system for this at this point you need this much amount of head and this must be also flow rate you may need this much amount of head. So pump will fill this requirement. So this is your operating point. Pumping water through two parallel pipes. So water at 20 degrees Celsius is to be pumped from a reservoir at that day is equal to 5 to another reservoir at a higher elevation z b is equal to 13 through the two pipes 36 meter long so these two pipes are 36 meter long with diameters 4 cm and 8 cm water is to pump by 70% efficient motor pump combination so the combination draws 8 kilowatt of electric power during operation so the minor loss and head loss in the pipe connected to the parallel pipes of two reservoirs considered negligible, determine the total flow rate between the reservoir and the flow rate through each pipe. This problem can be solved directly since the velocities or flow rate in pipe are not known. Therefore, we would normally use a trial and error approach. Here, however, nowadays equation solvers such as EES are widely used, and thus we will simply set up the equations to be solved by an equation solver. The usual head spread by the pump to the fluid is determined from. So this is your work electric which is 8000 watt given so it is equal to density into volume, velocity, volume flow rate into gravity into head of pump divided by efficiency of pump motor. So this is your first equation here. In this equation H pump is known which is head pump. Now we choose A and point at the free surface of the tool reservoir. So this is A point, this is V point at the surface of the reservoir. So noting that the fluid at the both point is open to atmosphere and thus P is equal to PB is equal to P atmosphere and the fluid velocity at both points are zero. VA is equal to BB is equal to zero. So because this reservoir is at still, so we will assume the velocity at A and B. 
is zero. Now uh, the energy equation for control volume between the two points simplifies to this energy equation here. Now you know pressure A is equal to pressure V is equal to pressure atmosphere. So this pressure will cancel out with this pressure. Velocity at the surface or reservoir is zero. So V A is zero, V is V zero. We are left with this term Z A H pump is equal to Z P plus head loss. So from here you can find head of pump which is equal to Z B minus Z A plus head loss which is this. We also know by definition of the junction that at the point B pressure must be same and at the point pressure must be same. So it means the head loss or you can say pressure drop in this pipe must be equal to the head loss or pressure drop of this pipe. We will assign head loss in this HL1 and here HL2. So HL1 is equal to HL2 is equal to HL. So this is also one of the equation, three equation and this is equation number four. So we have to here we have four equations. Now we can find the velocity of the pipe in first pipe and second pipe which is volume flow rate upon area cross section pipe. And this is your velocity in the first pipe, this is velocity in second pipe. Now in this question again we have two unknowns. So we can't solve these questions. So we'll assign it 5 and 6. Then we can find raw number if you know the velocity. So this is again raw number is equal to this and this. Now again here two are unknowns. One is your velocity, second is not. So we'll assign it 7 and equation. We can't solve this. So we know surface roughness is given and this is the equation to find the friction when your raw number of surface roughness is given. So this is for the first pipe and same for the second pipe. And head loss is dependent on friction factor which is this for first pipe and second pipe. Now we had also one more equation that volume flow rate is equal to volume flow rate of the first pipe and second pipe. So we had total 13 equations here by putting in the computer solver EES. So this 13 equations and 13 nanos and their simultaneous solution by equation solver gives volume flow rate this V1 and V2 this velocity and your head and pump. So total 13 solutions are given for 13 equations by the equation solver. So this is equation is for turbulent flow and in our solution raw number comes out to be in the range of turbulent. So our assumption of raw number greater than 4 for both pipes is uh, correct. Flow rate and velocity measurement in major application of fluid mechanics is determination of flow rates of fluids and numerous devices have been developed over the years for the purpose of flow metering. Flow meters range widely in their level of sophistication, size, cost, accuracy, versatility, capacity, pressure drop and operating principle. So some flow meter measure the flow rate directly by discharging and recharging a measuring chamber of known volume, quantities and keeping the traffic of number of discharge per time. But most flow meters measure the flow rate indirectly. They measure the average velocity or the quantity that is related to the average velocity such as pressure and drag and determine the volume flow rate. So volume flow rate is equal to velocity into AC. Now if you have to measure the velocity, you can measure the velocity at cross section of pipe. The velocity in the pipe varies from zero at the wall to the maximum at the center and it is important to keep in mind that when taking velocity measurements for laminar flow, for example, the average velocity is half of the central velocity. So but this is not a case of terminal flow. So in case of turbulent flow, we have to take weighted average of several local velocity measurements to determine the average velocity. Pitted and pitted static probes, pitted probes and pitted static probes named after French engineer. A pitted tube is just a tube with a pressure at tap at the stagnation point that measures stagnation pressure while a pitted static probe has both a stagnation pressure tap and several circumferential static pressure tap. You can see this is your pitted, pitted tube probe in which is your stagnation pressure will come at this point and uh, it is connected to the stagnation pressure meter and this is your pitted static probe which has your stagnation paper this tap also and also it has static pressure tap which are in the outer section of this tube so this is two concentric tubes where this tube is open to the atmosphere this tube is just closed from this side and and it is open to the atmosphere at this point so it will measure the static pressure so while this will measure the stagnation pressure so and these two are connected uh, here one is connected to this inner tube is connected to stagnant pressure meter and outer is connected to static pressure meter. The pitted static probe measure local velocity 
by measuring the pressure difference in conjunction with Bernoulli's equation. So this will is used to measure the velocity. So it is consisted of cylinder double tube aligned with a flow and connected to a differential pressure meter. The inner tube is fully open to the flow at nose and does it measure the stagnation pressure at location point 1. So this is your uh, stagnation pressure at point 1. This is your inner tube which is open to the flow. And the outer tube which is closed here, it is connected to the, at this point, these are two holes and it is used to measure the static pressure. So it will measure P2. For interest flow, flow with sufficiently high velocity so that the friction effects between point 0.1 and point 0.1 visible, the Bernoulli's equation is applicable and can be expressed as, so this is Bernoulli's equation which is applicable for this tube, with a static probe. Now Z1 and Z2 is equal to same because it is aligned horizontally. These two holes are almost at the same height. So Z1 and Z2 can be elected and V1 is also zero because of a stagnation conditions and the flow velocity V is equal to V2 becomes so this is velocity which is under 2 P1 minus P2 by density by putting this 0 and uh, by putting this and this 0 and or rearranging you will get V2 which is this. This is known as Peter formula. If the velocity is measured at a location where the local velocity is equal to the average flow velocity then the volume flow rate can be determined. V is equal to V into cross section area. Obstruction flow meter orifice venturi and nozzle meters. Consider in progressive study flow of fluid in a horizontal pipe of diameter D. So this is pipe diameter D. This is the flow of the fluid. That is constricted to a flow area of D as shown in figure. The mass balance at Bernoulli's equation between a location before the construction means at this point and location where construction occurs which mean, means at two point. So we apply the mass balance, the that is your mass balance is equal to A1 V1 A2 V2 and from this you will get V1 is equal to A2 by A1 into V2 or where A2 is our D and A1 is D. So we will get a relation between velocity and diameter of the pipe. This. Now apply Bernoulli's equation by assuming same Z is equal to Z2. So this is your Bernoulli's equation. Now combine this equation and this equation means put the value of velocity here and convert it to V2 and solve for V2 you will get this equation. It means you can measure the velocity of the fluid at obstruction. Once V2 is known, the flow rate can be determined, which we know the velocity multiplied by area of cross section, which is this one A2, will give you the flow rate. So it means this analysis shows that the flow rate through a pipe can be determined by constricting the flow and measuring the decrease in pressure. This is your decrease in pressure due to increase in velocity at the construction site. Noting that the pressure drop between two points along the flow can be measured easily by differential pressure transistor or manometer. So it is appears that a simple flow rate measurement device can be built by obstructing the flow. Flow meters based on principle are called obstruction flow meter and are widely used. So this equation is obtained by assuming no loss, but this is not actual so. In reality, some pressure loss due to friction effects are vital and thus the velocity will be less. Also fluid stream will continue to contract pass obstruction. So both losses can be accounted by, for by incorporating a correction factor called discharge coefficient. Means you can multiply this velocity with this CD that is your discharge coefficient which is less than 1 and measured experimentally. So you can see to measure the pressure we will select point here which is pressure before the obstruction and this is pressure after the obstruction and this is diameter of the restriction. If we use a plate with a hole, this is called a orifice meter. We can use flow nozzle here also and this is a venturi meter with the, this shape where cross section will decrease gradually. So this is called venturi meter. So these are common types of obstruction meters. This A0 here is uh, to find the volume flow rate. If you multiply this velocity with the coefficient of discharge and A0, you will get volume flow rate. A0 is the cross section area of this. This is the A0 here in this case. 
and coefficient of discharge depends on null number which is this 